Vector Calculus Coordinate Systems. This lecture is not going to be a comprehensive treatise on different coordinate systems. That's really a prerequisite for this class. Instead, what I'm going to do is just review differential length, differential area, differential volume, and the basic coordinate system for Cartesian, cylindrical, and spherical. There are certainly many other coordinate systems, but these are the big three that we will use in this class. During this class, we will be doing a lot of integration and derivatives, and line integrals will come up, surface integrals, volume integrals, and we'll be doing these in different coordinate systems. We're choosing the different coordinate systems because, in fact, it will make the math a lot easier. Normally, we pick the coordinate system that has the same shape as the device we're analyzing. If we're analyzing something that looks like a cylinder, we'll probably pick cylindrical coordinate system, for example. So we have line surface volume integrals and combinations of these, and we need to understand what these differentials look like in the different coordinate systems. So let's go ahead and look at those. Cartesian coordinates. This is ordinary x, y, z. And so x is telling us the position or how far from the origin along the x-axis our point is located. Y is telling us how far along the y-axis our point is located. And z is telling us how far along the z-axis our point is located until we finally locate our point. These are very likely the coordinate system that you are most familiar with and most comfortable working with. So first we have our differential volume and we have this little tiny box despite me drawing it very large here this is actually an infinitely small block but it has a side length along the x-axis of dx, a side length along the y-axis of dy, and a height along the z-axis of dz. So the volume of this little differential box is dx times dy times dz. And we will call that dv, differential volume in Cartesian coordinates. Then we have our differential areas. Now, sometimes differential area is written as a vector because we're not only interested in what the differential area is, but we're also interested in what direction is perpendicular to that area. And if we're not interested in the direction, we simply just ignore that part of the differential. So first, we have the face defined by the xy plane. So I'll highlight the xy plane. And so in fact, we'll come up to the top surface and look at that. So the area of this plane is simply dx times dy. And the direction perpendicular to that plane is the z direction. So our vector differential surface is simply dx dy times the direction az. Well, we can look at the xz plane. And of course, the area of this would be dx times dz, and the direction would be in the y direction. And then finally, last, we can look at the yz plane. So the area of this differential plane is dy times dz, and the direction is along x. So the differential vector surface, dy times dz, in the x direction. So those are our differential surfaces in Cartesian coordinates. Now on to the cylindrical coordinates. So instead of x, y, z, we have rho, phi, and z. Rho is the radial distance off of the z-axis. So the z-axis will be the vertical axis, the same z-axis that we have with Cartesian coordinates. And so rho is the distance off of the z-axis. Then we have the angle phi. The angle phi is the angle of the point off of what was the x-axis. And then, of course, we have z, which is the vertical height. And so we put these together, and we can locate a point anywhere in 3D space. So 
So we start with our vector lengths. So the length in this direction extending out from the z-axis, that's the row direction. So the vector length of this side would be d rho. The height of this little differential block, the differential length there would be dz. And along this arc on the outside, the differential length is actually rho times d phi. The reason this rho is here is because the farther away from the z-axis this little differential volume is, the longer this differential length. So now that we have the length of all three slides, well, the differential volume is just rho, d rho, d phi, dz. So that's our differential volume. Then we add our vector differential surfaces, and we're constructing these exactly how we did for the Cartesian coordinates. So we can look at this top face. And so this outside edge here has length of rho d phi, and this edge has length of d rho. So what is the area of this? It's rho d rho d phi. And the direction perpendicular to that surface is in the z direction. So we put a unit vector z here. And so that is the vector differential surface for this top piece of our little differential volume. And likewise, we can look at this big outer face here which has dimensions dz along the vertical direction, and then rho d phi. So the total surface area is rho d phi dz. And of course, the direction perpendicular to that surface is in the rho direction. So we put in a unit vector rho. And then our very last surface has dimension d rho and has height dz. So we have a phi d rho dz, for the, and I'm sorry, then the direction in the phi direction. This is in the phi direction. So we have our vector differential surfaces and our vector length from this slide. Now we move into spherical coordinates. In spherical coordinates, we have our radius r, which is the distance from the origin to the point that we're interested in. So in cylindrical coordinates, we had our rho, our radial term from the z-axis. Now our radial term is always from the origin. So that's r. Theta, sometimes called the elevation angle, is measured off of the z-axis. It's the angle of r off of the z-axis. And then we have phi. This is exactly what it was for cylindrical coordinates. It's the angle off of the x-axis. And of course, we tie all these together and we can locate a point anywhere in 3D space. I will warn you, if you scour the internet for spherical coordinates, you will see plenty of formulations where the definition of phi and theta are backwards. And they'll use phi for theta and theta for phi and so on. So just be very careful. If you see theta and phi for spherical coordinates, don't assume you know what's being talked about. Dig deeper to see how those variables are being used. So just like the other coordinate systems, we have differential length, differential volume, differential area. And rather than go through all this again, I summarized it all in the last slide. So here's one table summarizing for Cartesian, cylindrical, and spherical coordinates. We have the differential length, we have our vector differential areas, also called normal area, and our differential volumes.